The labor theory of value, uh, especially as seen by the classical economists, um, we've already seen the labor theory of value come up in Locke and Rousseau, and um, and then this, uh, especially, uh, I think, out of John Locke, um, the idea of the labor value you know, comes over into classical political economy and Adam Smith in particular, you know, he, he establishes this as a, a fundamental feature of polit political economy as a, as a field of study. Uh, he was colleagues with Hume, uh, so they're both uh, Scottish and uh, worked uh, in the same circle, you know, they were social with one another, friends, and um, and they both wrote very similarly about ethics and morals. So they had very similar views on ethics and morals. And I've mentioned before that I'm not too impressed with Hume's uh, moral theory, uh, neither with Adam Smith's, um, but, but they did believe in this kind of conventionality of British society uh, as being, uh, as being uh, the basis of morality and that human actions are very, very much shaped by their culture and that at least the way that British culture shapes people into behavior is uh, very moral um, <clears throat> and sort of the model of morality. And uh, there is this kind of, uh, there is this Protestant work ethic uh, that's pointed to later on by uh, Max Weber at the end of the 19th century, a hundred years later, as, as being kind of this, this key component of the development of capitalism. I, I, you know, there are some problems with that where Weber doesn't really understand what capitalism is by the mid 19th century. But for the capitalism that Adam Smith was um, was working on, and we're talking like 1775, uh, Adam Smith uh, is publishing, and then David Ricardo at the beginning of the 19th century, um, uh, the Protestant work ethic does seem to be very relevant to to his treatment of burgeoning capitalism as it existed in the 18th century, which we saw all the technical uh, uh, innovations that took place in the textile industry, especially, you know, Adam Smith is thinking about this very um, primitive, you know, let's not say primitive because I already used that word, but this very uh, initial sort of phase of capitalism of the 18th century. And David Ricardo is still very much thinking in those terms as well. But by the time we get to Marx, you know, we're really confronted with factory um, production, full industrial bourgeois production, as, as I've referred to it. Um, but the Protestant work ethic um, fits in with this labor theory of value that, that you know, if you put your hard work into something, that's what gives you ownership of it. And uh, Protestants uh, were very industrious and uh, a lot of, of uh, early uh, burger style capitalists um, were very much in the mold of a Protestant, Puritan, Presbyterian, uh, what, what have you. And, uh, and even Anglicans to some extent, but more so the Puritans and the Presbyterians were very much about putting in your hard work and that when you put hard work into something that gave you ownership of it. And it is kind of tied in with this yeoman farmer sort of uh, archetype in, in British culture, uh, which we saw develop with the Peels. Um, and so labor, the labor theory of value uh, for Adam Smith and David Ricardo is that when, thing, when commodities enter the marketplace, commodities are priced 
um, you know, prices can vary for different reasons, but the prices tend to gravitate or, or reach an equilibrium at, uh, based on the amount of labor that it takes to produce those co commodities. And so underneath prices is, is the amount of labor that's put into it. Not that they exactly match, but that's sort of the basis of value and, um, and that there is a value added to raw materials when you put labor into them in the way that, that John Locke describes. Okay, uh, but then Adam Smith elaborates that quite a bit. And in particular, what he does is he describes the whole division of labor process uh, that's taking place in burger style production, uh, you know, just uh, in sort of not quite cottage industry, but like the just coming out of a cottage industry where uh, capitalists might have a workshop, uh, but it's not fully mechanized and not, uh, not, not uh, largely not automated. But what the capitalist does is break up the burger style production process into discrete steps. And then different people are working on each discrete step so that it's a more kind of like the, uh, an early form of a production line process. And, um, and, and then uh, that, uh, that certainly is something that then becomes a central feature of, of uh, bourgeois industrial production factory, the factory system, as we saw Arkwright um, developed right about the same time that Adam Smith was publishing. So Adam Smith didn't have Arkwright's factory system to refer to. He's referring to an, the earlier phase before Arkwright, which I tried to describe. In, um, in the discussion of the textile industry. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, value added by putting in labor and also the division of labor, okay. And this becomes uh, important. And I think that's, that's it. I think I've said enough about labor theory of value early on uh, for us to see that this doesn't just come out of nowhere. This is an idea that's floating about uh, in, in uh, Locke and Rousseau, especially we saw this. Okay. 